Okay, let me now introduce uh, the uh, head of, there are two technical heads that I have actually, we have made one of them, made them Rajesh Kushakar, who heads the uh, uh, significant part of development on Akash, particularly related to hardware and the clicker thing. And the other team leader is Parag. Parag Tiwari heads the Akash lab there for the development of applications and content. And his colleague Ninad, they have a team of uh, people who coordinated all the Akash uh, Android workshops earlier. Incidentally, they have agreed to conduct one more Android programming workshop for the benefit of teachers and students after the next semester starts. So this will not be conducted in that coordinators followed by that workshop. It's not a teacher's training workshop. It will most probably be conducted over two weekends. And all the Akash Project Center people are expected to benefit from them for the new set of students and teachers will work on it. They have also compiled all the applications and content which have been developed. And I do not know whether you are aware of the site. What is the site name? So Akash Labs in is the consolidated website, uh, or is the website. You will you will wonder why this funny name. Akash dot in, Akash two dot in, Akash three dot in, Akash one dot in, Akash one dot com. All these uh, websites had disappeared because squatters had come and acquired these and they were sitting on it. And we had to find something ending in dot in. So finally, this was identified. This was bought. I think some of us are individually paying for these websites. But whatever, so this website is available. This talks about introduction, history of Akash, Akash configuration, tablet distribution and testing, training programs, projects, and future of Akash. The most important thing for you is projects, which, which describe all kinds of projects that have been undertaken uh, so far using the... If you look at all the projects here, these are all described here. Some of them are done by IIT Bombay uh, teams, but many of them have been done by people like you. So any, any group activity that your students or teachers have undertaken, and any project that they have completed, they have to upload it on GitHub, the source code and everything, and they have to intimate to our team so that that documentation is uploaded here and a link is provided. So this is going to be a common link, and this is the link which now going forward will be made available to all students and teachers in the country, and in fact, this is a global link, because everything is in open source. So this is something I would like each one of you to take back and talk to your Akash coordinator specifically, saying the following, do the students and teachers of your own college know about this website? Do the teachers and students of your own college who have developed some useful applications. Have they submitted it formally to our team? There is a method also described how to, how to send that information, how our team will consolidate that information. Please note that all of this is in public domain. So we do not want, for example, any copied quote that some student might have copied from quote from somewhere, which is actually part of either proprietary or not recognized. We do not want that to come here. There's a lot of responsibility when you release something in open source. You have to ensure that either the code is your own or it is cited properly if there is a code that is taken. And for that, you have either the necessary license because that is in open source or you have the necessary permission. All this has to be ensured. But once we do that, you can see the usefulness that is available. In fact, that is how the open source communities strive. Now, while Parag leads this activity, and there is also another small component called school projects. The school pilot, as I said, we are conducting. We are unable to extend that anymore because that itself was a small component of our major program. But that work is also supported. They have an independent team of school animations and lesson builders, etc. But the technical team under Parag's leadership also helps them doing that. Now, when the technical problems started appearing, Either the screen is broken, something is not working, software is not working, the device is logged, whatever, whatever, all kinds of technical problems started coming. Uh, we appointed a technical uh, problem-solving team or tech support team. 
Currently, there are only two people on the tech support team. That is uh, Virendra and uh, uh, Amol. But these people, what they do is, they correspond with uh, a complainer, they try to find out the problem, then they discuss with Ninad and Parag. If the Ninad from Parag's team almost works full time on, uh, Ninad is sitting there. Uh, Parag's team works almost full time on solving these technical problems. We have discovered the maximum problems are where the top screen is broken. It is broken either due to mishandling or due to transport or whatever purposes. We are already in dispute with the vendor. Whether it is a, suppose we discover that the screen is broken, whose responsibility it is? He claims that he has sent everything right. So it must have been broken during transit. If something is broken during transit, he says, collect the money from insurance company. The transit fellow says that the transit happened long time ago. How are we sure that this is uh, broken during transit? You should have opened and inspected packages in front of us when we delivered and should have shown us that it was broken. You understand how clever we all are in disputing anybody else's claim. So the whole world specializes in that. We don't want to go into those disputes. But what we decided is we'll categorize all the problems faced by people and we'll try to find alternate solutions. For your information, the vendor has quoted that to repair a screen which is not a manufacturing defect but which is damaged. Please note that the warranty does not cover damage <coughs> done due to usage. The warranty only covers manufacturing. So if it is not a manufacturing defect, we have to solve it ourselves. Now using some funds which were with us, we said we will try to solve these out. But the vendor said he will charge 1500 rupees for repairing any, what is that, the, the screen replacement. I, I wanted to tell you to understand the implications of what is happening. The whole device cost 2,263 rupees, but I had to pay 1,500 rupees to get it repaired. Still we said, all right, please replace it. We sent them some devices. Now they say you have to send it to Amritsar at your cost and collect it back at your cost. Now if I have to end up paying more money than what I originally paid for that, is it worth it? So our people discovered from the Lamington Road, they could get some uh, screens. Uh, they could find out similarly some local solutions. And they have found out that some solutions are possible, which may be cost effective. They have tried to repair some of the tablets here itself. They have set up an additional team under Rajesh Kusharkar's group, who actually do that small time repairs and so on. This is not a sustainable activity in the long term. Suppose I am in Kakinada or Coimtur or Kolkata, for me to send a tablet all the way to IIT Bombay so that somebody from Lamington Road can be, can, can be sent to Lamington Road, buys a 400 rupees thing, repairs it and sends the tablet all the way back is not the way things will work. Take for example your mobile phone. You don't send it to the manufacturer for repair. You go to the local shop somewhere. Now the difference is that when the ecosystem in the country develops to the same extent that the mobile ecosystem has developed. You will not be sending these tablets anywhere. You will be going to a corner or you will be getting them repaired in your own lab. Now what I have decided is that in future, all such problems will be expected to be solved by your Akash Project Center. But what we are doing is currently we have FAQs which are uh, located on this. Uh, can you just go to that page, FAQ page? So if you go to Akash Tech Support website, now these are frequently asked questions. What is this? Only frequently asked questions. I thought there will be answers. Oh. Very funny answer. Please go through the following link. So the link will give you a video, I think. Yeah, this is a YouTube link. Anyway. Now, the frequently asked questions are not too many. There may be some more questions that people may have. I think what is desperately needed, because there will be something like 12,000 to 14,000 students across the country who will be working on various Akash projects. Now, as far as the technical activities under project are concerned, they are being handled by the AkashLabs.in. 
But as far as the problems related to use of Akash tablet is concerned, there has to be a forum and there has to be a solution. Today what is happening is that even our tech support team, which has discovered some simple solutions. Uh, remember I introduced you to our senior advisor, Professor Prakash Vaidya, he was here somewhere. Uh, Professor Prakash Vaidya is here. Uh, because he is also an hardware expert, he has found several simple solutions, inexpensive solutions by working with the local electronic supply industry in, in uh, Lamington Road. But if those solutions and the method of solving a technical problem are made available to you, there is no reason why you cannot effect the same repairs. In any case, there is now no cost support or price support that can be given by the project. Once the period ends, then these still remain your property, you should still use them, but you should continue to deploy your own local talent to get them repairs, okay, repaired. So one thing is, we will be buttressing this side, apart from frequently asked questions, we will also list specific technical problems and their solution. So the technical solution manual, instead of you solving those, you should, for example, somewhere you have a driver problem. Now you're just saying that driver problem is there. If you can give the source of that driver, if you can give the method of how that driver should be put in, if there is a uh, software law, how exactly that is to be resolved. All these are already described here? Software law is already described. Yeah. So you should do an exhaustive study of all problems and for whatever problems you have solutions, you should list them here. Now, here is another suggestion. Now that we open up the technical repair path, also requesting all remote centers to participate, it is very obvious to me that there will be some technical problems which some remote center may be able to come up with either a more efficient solution or more effective solution or a solution which nobody else could find out. Shouldn't that solution be also listed here? So that means what you should do is go back to your Akash project coordinators Tell them that this is the new repair strategy that Professor Patak has announced, namely that each center will have to take care of the repairs. For that, they are buttressing their website. They will give all the details. And there will be a communication regularly between the Akash project coordinators and our tech support team. But from this point of view, that this was the problem, how did you solve it or whatever. And if there is an innovative solution, anybody in your labs is able to come up with or a cheaper solution, for example, please make sure that you share that so that all of us will benefit from it. Is that okay? What they are planning is, they are planning weekly video sessions with the Akash project coordinators. So it is modeled, I think, on ask a question kind of thing. So all of you are AVU remote centers. The AVU facility should be made available. Not all remote centers must participate in every uh, AVU interaction because any interaction that you do should also be recorded and uploaded for the benefit of others. But if you have any specific problem, please encourage your Akash project coordinators or any other technical colleague to join such sessions and discuss on, not just online, but through a video interaction of how the problems are being sorted out. Okay. Yeah, any more, any question on this? Otherwise we'll go with the next session. Uh, uh, these Akash tablets I am using for uh, attendance uh, posting. For uh, attendance, attendance posting. student attendance, and uh, the teachers are taking the uh, tablets to their class, and there itself they are posting the attendance. Attendance, okay. Uh, that is online attendance monitoring system right. uh, done by my students in the, my college. Very good. Uh, but uh, one problem is uh, some of the tablets are getting very less. <coughs> Wi-Fi access, the attendance posting through the Wi-Fi. Uh, some of the tablets are not uh, getting uh, Wi-Fi uh, uh, signal strength. And some may be getting fastly, some of not getting fastly. That is the problem. Okay. And another uh, tablets are uh, uh, slow uh, charging. Slow in charging. Yeah, these two problems are um, In fact, getting. a third problem that our people discovered is that the batteries, uh, uh, the, there is an issue of the uh, amount of charge that is held by the batteries. So sometimes if they are charging slowly, the problem is often not with the charger but with the battery. Now uh, I think our people have found an alternative battery available. That I was tested with other uh, tablet that is charging. Yeah, yeah. 
charger is working fine and the tablets are not uh, getting charging. No, I am talking about the battery within the tablet having a problem. Uh, that may be a thing. Yeah. And another problem I face is that uh, sometimes it is uh, the touch is hanging, hang up, uh, touch, 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 touch is not working. Yeah. Uh, what I did is I opened the uh, tablet and uh, removed uh, the uh, that uh, five volt supply, uh, that is three point five volt supply, and then it was working fine. Uh, have you posted this innovative solution? to our technical team. Because uh, the people should know the hardware because they have to open it and... Uh, I agree. No, what I'm asking is different. No, no, not, not at ah. posted. So, uh, 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 please don't make this beautiful piece of knowledge proprietary to yourself. Please share it with everybody. Just as you are openly sharing it now, please go back and ask your team. Even I can show that... No, no, uh, not showing. What is important is a written document saying exactly what is to be done. For example, you say open the tablet, identify 3.5 volt thing. Some people in some remote centers may not know what exactly is that. So ideally I would suggest if you take a handy cam, go to your lab and show somebody doing it. Yeah. It will be just a two minute video clip. Yeah. But I'll tell you it could be very effective. Not as a substitute for documentation, but as an additional documentation. Huh? So if you could make that two minute video clip, if you write a document on how to repair this problem, state what the problem was, state what the solution is, and send it, we'll be very glad to upload it on our, our tech support site with the credentials given to you. Thank you, sir. We'll do that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Every individual will be having his own ideology regarding the repairing concepts as well as the upcoming concepts on this repairing concept, yeah. so that uh, each and every individual can post it that uh, problem, solution for a particular problem can be better than this in a discussion, discussion forum. There is a discussion forum. The problem is our Akash project coordinators are not sharing that information with all the people in the institute. If they do that, then you see what happens is the Akash project coordinator, I don't blame him or her, but suppose I am the Akash co project coordinator, I will think there is only my responsibility to look at this. If I go into the share mode, and if I say this is a common problem, let us all solve it, many such things will come. There is a discussion forum already. They popularize that discussion forum, and the solutions which come out of it after due testing should be reported and should be made available for everybody. I agree with you that more the people, there will be better solutions. Excuse Hello, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, we tried to implement the C and C++ on uh, Akash tablet, huh. uh, but uh, we got some software problem. Actually, we tried number of times. We could not connect. Then I wrote to Dr. Kannan, I uh, Bombay, uh, asking him how to do it. He sent some links. Yes. I, I gone through that links and tried, but still I could not get it, sir. Is your team can help me to establish that C++ or C? So, or yeah, you will have to continue to badger his team members who specialize in that uh, Linux uh, port on Akash and the associated library issues will get that solution done. Okay. That not be Thank done. you, sir. Thank you. Excuse uh, me, sir. There is a ticketing system on this tech support. You can actually raise a ticket saying my ticket number is 1453. Now that ticket remains alive till the issue is sorted out. And the solution to that ticket need not necessarily come from IIT Bombay's tech support team. It can come from friends like here or anybody else. So this is a good system. I think there is less of awareness amongst the entire institute which runs a Akash project center. Could that be a possible problem? For example, did you know about these sites and the tech support and so on? All right. So what we should do is we should, uh, I think we should address, we should reach out, uh, reach out to the coordinators and tell them to advertise. All right. Any other? Uh, Excuse me, sir. Yeah, please. Sir, from where we will get information related to the Android student project? Like Android? Where to upload, uh, where to upload the student's project? Oh, there is that akashlabs.insight. Okay, sir. I just showed you the akashlabs.insight. You go there, they have a t detailed tutorial with screenshots on how to first register the information about your projects, then how to take them to completion. How to load the code on GitHub, 
how to give the documentation, etc. Everything is there. Each institute, by the way, has a login and a password, and each Akash coordinator can upload any locally developed application to either GitHub or to AkashLabs.in. You don't have to depend on anybody. Uh, sir, can you please explain uh, about some GitHub? What is GitHub? Ah. When I release any software in open source, it means that I want the rest of the world to use it. But how will the rest of the world know which is this software, who is giving it, what is the code, what are the details? So GitHub is a repository. It's a common open source repository. It has thousands of projects. Anybody, it is not connected with institutions. Suppose you develop a software and you want to release it open source, you can open a GitHub account, you can start a GitHub project, you can upload all the code, including work in progress. You can even create a community of other like-minded people in the world who will contribute to that code. But you will continue to supervise the inclusion of modifications in that code, etc. So GitHub is a repository. It's also used for version control extension. Yeah. The GitHub also permits extensive version control. So you have released one version which is working. But second version on which you are working currently, it is not yet fully released. But both versions can simultaneously coexist on GitHub. And people who want to use a fully working model can go to the first version. People who want to contribute to the uh, work in progress model, they can work on that. Sir? By the way, Linux operating system that you use, the entire Linux source code is on GitHub. Yeah. Sir, I think uh, there is a solution. Uh, uh, in 10,000 uh, teachers workshop, uh, the uh, required, th that information is shared with those uh, teachers. Those, uh, those peoples are also as a project, co project guide in uh, uh, Any colleges. for, for <laughs> Android applications. So uh, they upload those uh, projects in. OK, that's a good point. We will make available the information on GitHub to all the 10,000 teachers. It could be a 10-minute session for that. Agree. Hello, sir. sir. Yeah. Here. Here, here. Oh, there are two simultaneous questions. Huh? Ah. My question is that, suppose institute or student is not willing to repair the tablet, and in subsequent workshop, tablets are required to conduct the quizzes through the clicker. And we assume that all tablets are not working, then what to do? Nothing. Your session, your center will not be able to participate in conduct of quizzes using clicker. <laughs> My second question is that, yeah. so should we send the tablets with a broken screen to the IIT Bombay? No more tablets are to be sent to IIT Bombay. I thought we spent about 15 minutes discussing that. No, no. Uh, Ma'am no, said that. No, no, no. Any, any repair of any tablet will not be undertaken by IIT Bombay anymore, except for those which will be brought by the coordinators coming for the Computer networking work. My question is the same. Huh. Um, uh, from my institute, one coordinator is coming for the CN right. workshop. So if Should there are there are problems, but now in the light of this discussion that has happened, he is coming, he or she will be coming only on 5th of May. Now between now and 5th of May, try to talk to your Akash coordinator and look at all the FAQs, look at all the possible problems. And if you think that you can get some of those repaired there, please don't send them here. Because here we are going to do exactly the same thing that your people can do at your end. There is not, there's not no difference. There is no vendor involved now. We are on our own. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. But if there are problems which you think IIT Bombay can solve, please feel free to send them with the networking coordinate. That is the instruction that has already gone. So I'm not withdrawing it. But ideally, no more tablets should come. But for the networking coordinators will accept those tablets. That's fine. Uh, sir, yeah, yeah. Sir, uh, just to add to the previous discussion on GitHub, okay, it's a uh, very uh, nice tool that we should uh, make aware of to the students. So what we did was, along with the spoken tutorial uh, project, we had uh, conducted a dockathon.
okay one of the major problems with people using free and open source software is that they don't have readily available manuals or uh, something so as part of this two day activity we had uh, several contributors students faculty coming uh, uh, and uh, contributing to this lab manual which was uh, hosted on github okay uh, so something similar uh, others also uh, could this make is an a absolutely excellent suggestion do you notice what he did he decided to use the github where a whole lot of useful open source software is there but not proper documentation and he involved his faculty and students and everybody in a session where something like lab manuals were got prepared and that is their unique contribution to the entire family of users of open source software i i would recommend that such initiatives be taken by all institutions because you are now trying to strengthen the usage of open source software by many more people more easily okay thank you so much that's a very good initiative sir actually i have an off the track question yeah what we are we are seeing that the open source is increasing day by day and it is getting popular so i want to know what is your thought or what are your thoughts regarding the future of software industry um, where we are going actually i can speak for 5 hours on that <laughs> and this is definitely neither related to akash nor related to computer programming but in this context i will only tell you the following we need an increased commitment not only to talk about open source software but to use it and practice what we preach uh, you are not aware of this but uh, two days ago i was fired by a past student of mine who is a coordinator here he said sir your slides were prepared using microsoft powerpoint and i i admitted i said yes the reason is i have a very peculiar situation large number of people in this institute all technical people use some version of linux which is open source we all use open office but there are a large number of staff members administrative staff members who are familiar only with the microsoft products now in my own office i have a peculiar situation that i have an office staff which uses microsoft and i have technical staff which uses open office so what i have is i have two desktops so one is linux one is microsoft i have five laptops in which i have a dual boot system one of them is a microsoft device because it uses uh, it is a tablet machine on which i use the camtasia studio and others and some of these products which are paid products do not work on linux so i am forced to use microsoft in situations where i could have easily used something else i explained it to db the other day now but the point is we have to encourage people using as many open source components as possible and the usage is not possible to be changed just by talking about it now one concrete thing and this is the only answer i'll give you is you ask the following question to every student to every teacher to your own institute principal and so on can your principal or director or can you keep a hand on your heart and say that every piece of software in your labs is legal every piece of software can you say that i can say that about my labs i can say that because this simple rule that we follow is whatever software you require for your academic work whether it is costed or open source doesn't matter but if it is costed a legal copy should work do you know that in five of my laptops where they are dual boot systems i do not have the latest version of microsoft office i have purchased it only on one laptop on no other laptop i have installed it i use only the older software now this is a policy this is a commitment this is the ethics that we have to follow in my labs people would be deregistered from the computers for 7 days if they are found to be using any illegal software on their machine now do you enforce this do you shout at your vendor if any supplies a desktop and surreptitiously loads all the pirated software do you object to it corruption is a two way street <laughs> sir uh, that is one aspect but uh, not, i was thinking about the economy no no that is not one aspect i am saying this is a fundamental aspect 
Obviously, sir. And each one of us have to become aware. And as computer science professionals, we have to spread this awareness to others. I tell you, when I took this sabbatical in 2002, I went around 67 colleges, as I mentioned to someone. In every place, I asked this question. There was a small college in Vasai, where, where, where I was visiting. When I asked this, a student proudly got up and said, Sir, every software in my college is legal software. Wherever we use Microsoft, we have paid for that. We paid the license for that. Now, this is a, this is a fundamental ethical matter. It, has, it is much more than the professional thing. And we have, to, we have to do that, yes. There are many other things that we can talk about it, but this is the fundamental thing. The rule should be very simple. Of course, we will need all kinds of software. And there is no merit in saying that open source software can solve all problems of the world. That is taking a jihadi attitude. I just want to add. <laughs> yeah, but but I will say this simple rule you should remember. One, I should be free to use any software that I need. I decide my need. But two, I will decide that need to be legally and ethically correct. I think it is up to us to spread this message across uh, the country amongst our colleagues at least. The teachers have to be the keepers of the ethics, at least as far as academics is concerned. Thank you for this discussion.